Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you, as always, by tutvid.com. My name is Nathaniel Dodson. We're going to be talking about how to create a t-shirt design mock-up today from a free PSD that you can download and also placing the design on the front of a t-shirt that a model is wearing already. You're going to love it. In fact, here's some examples of what we're going to do floating by on screen. Um, so, hey, you know what? Without further ado, Let's jump into the tutorial and take a look. Uh, here we go. We've got this. This is a free mock-up design PSD that you can download. I'll have a link down in the description. It's not a sponsor, nothing like that. It's just an insanely useful uh, resource that just so happens to be free. Now, how do we work with this? Oh, by the way, we also are going to do this. Potentially, I'm working on a couple different t-shirts that I'll both give away uh, in some, I don't know, I'll figure out some kind of contest or just do like a, a twice a week giveaway a shirt to like a great commenter or somebody that's always been commenting and supporting the site um, or something like that. Or, you know, and they'll also, of course, be uh, for sale on tutvid.com. But let me know if you like the designs that you see in this tutorial. That would be great. Uh, but yeah, so we're going we're gonna to take a look at how to mock up this t-shirt and also mock up this t-shirt. So here's how it all begins. Uh, this is all pretty straightforward. Your design here, double click to layer it on. I don't really like to do the double click thing. I like to kind of go my own way. So I'm gonna create a new layer here uh, and I'm gonna hit Command Option G to kind of unclip that. And I'm gonna name this layer artwork hyphen mine. And in fact, I will shut off the your design factor there. Now, the reason it just got all black and funky is because the shadow overlay got shut off. So we want to select that layer and reclip it to the artwork mine layer by hitting command option or control alt G. And you can see it clips back in. It doesn't look so janky and weird anymore. And we're not going to delete the your design here layer because we want to grab this smart filter and move it up to artwork mine. So I'm going to, well, I don't want to right click on artwork mine yet and make it a smart object. What I want to do is drag some artwork in. So I'm going to go to my finder and I'm going to go to logo v1.ai and I'm going to drag this. This is created in Adobe Illustrator, drop it right into my Photoshop document. It's actually going to drop a smart object in. See, open as smart object. You see that right there? Open as smart object. Hit OK. And, uh, We'll give it a break and you can see it's going to open. It's not really going to use the artwork mine layer. That's fine. It is going to preserve that clipped layer mask. I'm going to hold down shift and alt. So that's shift and option on the Mac. Make the artwork just a little bit smaller. Drag it upward a little bit and I'll just kind of drop it, you know, in place wherever. That's probably fine. I can just select the artwork mine layer, delete it, get rid of it. And I'm going to select my smart filters here and drag and drop them up on uh, the logo V1. It's going to say, hey, look, could not complete. Move all filter effects command because file was not found. Hit OK. All that's basically, uh, it's telling me is that the the file to displace this was not found so I'm going to double click on displace and horizontal scale 10 vertical scale 10 fine whatever hit OK and it's going to open this up and say hey where's the file well the file is right in here it's in the zip file that you download see it there's both a front and back of the t-shirt and then displacement front and back so I'm going to load displacement front dot uh, PSD hit open and you're going to see it's going to kind of fix everything right there kind of blend the graphic in a little bit more everything's hunky dory once more now, guys, before we go any further, I want to let you know that I'm selling a course over on tutvid.com, not just potentially t-shirts soon, but right now selling a course. A link just appeared right there. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop, um, and I harp on it all the time. But if you pick up a course, it just helps support what we do here, helps me keep cranking this stuff out, and I'm just looking to crank out more and more and more, and not just more, but better, right? I don't want to, I'm not looking to add days to my life, but rather life to my days. I'm not looking to add tutorials to your Photoshop life. I'm looking to add photos. Photoshop to your tutorial life and that's exactly what we're going to do here but it all begins with picking up a course helping support what we do but just watching this video is supporting as well because advertisers pay and all of that and this video is totally free so great let's get back to the video speaking of the video uh, all right so here we are we've got our graphic in place uh, new displacement map rocking and rolling uh, now we have some other stuff here that we can play around with see change t-shirt color here or edit fill value to adjust contrast see, this is a fill uh, uh, fill opacity if I reduce it the shirts gonna get a little darker we can't quite see the shadows as much I increase it and the shirt almost looks metallic not the greatest look uh, I'm gonna just drop it you know keep it right around 70 kind of where it was and then I can double click on the photo filter adjustment layer and right now it's just this gray, but I can, you know, I can make it a blue if I want. And then I've got a super bright blue shirt. Let's desaturate that a little bit, make it a little bit more like you would probably see if you got a blue shirt uh, from the printer. Uh, something like that, like a very deep navy blue. We could go with, you know, an olive green or a brighter green or, you know, all kinds of things. We could go with a pink shirt. 
or a brighter pink shirt or a red shirt, all kinds of different things. Let's let's stick with the red shirt here real quick. Let's go red. Uh, and one of the other cool things that you can do, I'm going to actually, I'm just going to drag my properties panel and drop it over here in my tool, uh, my stacked tool icon bar here. If I go right above my logo V1 layer, we can just call this graphics, whatever, and I add something like a hue saturation adjustment layer, first of all, it's going to automatically be clipped to just the graphics layer, which means that all this hue saturation adjustment, it's only going to attack our vector graphic we placed. I could do something like tick on colorize, increase the saturation, drop the brightness, because remember our graphic was white, so drop the brightness, and maybe make the, the logo something like a gold, right? So we've got like the gold logo on the red shirt. Kind of a cool look, right? And it's all done just with the little hue saturation adjustment layer. Now this is the simple one. This is just quickly jump in, you know, fire away at this... PSD comp that you can download this mock-up file so easy to do it's taken me five minutes to explain it It's even faster once you've done it and you go in and just boom 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 knock it out And you've got yourself a great t-shirt comp, but it's a little It's free, but it's a little boring. Let's be honest, right? You want to be able to take your t-shirt designs and apply them to a person wearing the shirt Let's take a look at how to do that. And here's exactly how we do that We have this uh, image of this girl right over here, but the first step to working in this image is getting a nice complex selection of the shirt. Now, I've already done that, so I'm going to work with my image over here. And I'm going to make sure that I select my top layer here and select all the way down to the photo filter layer and just delete them. So all I have is my original model photo, which I really, well, I do need it because it's everything, uh, everything around the shirt. And then up here, I've duplicated the, the image and all I have is a mask. I'm going to alt or option click on the mask. The mask is just showing the shirt. How did I get this mask? Well, a little bit of work. I used the quick selection tool and I selected the shirt and then I used select and mask to just kind of refine the edges around the hair. I've got a bunch of different tutorials on making hair selections and crazy complicated selections and working with select and mask. It's kind of a pain in the butt, I'm not going to lie. Um, and working with refine edge and things like that. Search around my YouTube channel and find them. It would take us 10 or 15 minutes just to select the shirt. So I don't really want to get into it right here, right now. Um, but you want to make sure you select the shirt of the model to which you're going to be adding your graphic. It's the most important step of this entire process. Now, once you have your girl or your guy or whoever, you've got the clothing masked out, just shut that layer off. And what we want to do is take the original layer here and convert it to black and white. So I'm going to do this. One of my favorite ways to convert to a black and white using a gradient map adjustment layer that's that icon right there in the adjustment panel and there we go a simple black to white gradient looks great now that we have this we want to save this as a PSD we need that displacement map remember that we used in the PSD comp we need that displacement map so what I'm gonna do actually I'm gonna double click this first I'm gonna push the black slider over so I just selected the gradient stripe I'm gonna push the black slider over it's gonna intensify my shadows a little bit more I think it'll give me a little bit better displacement and we're gonna go file save as not save we don't want to save over our original document we're going to go to the desktop and i'm going to save this as displacement map and important here dot psd i'm saving it as a photoshop format document not a jpeg not a tiff none of that nonsense go ahead and hit save hit okay once we've done that we're just going to get rid of this gradient map we don't need it anymore we can turn on our model layer Again, we created this selection using quick selection, cleaned up the edges a little bit using select a mask, yada, 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 a bunch of tutorials on it, all that good stuff. Um, now what we want to do is add uh, our photo filter, which is basically going to convert and change the color of the shirt. So let's go ahead and add a photo filter, and we need to clip it to our model image. So command option or control alt G. All right. Now, a couple important things in the photo filter. You want to make sure preserve luminosity is not checked on. So make sure that's checked off. We're going to bump density up to 100. See how like, it looks really ratty, looks really flat, not good at all. Let's go color and let's choose, I think I was going with like a pink before. So I'm going to choose like a nice pink here. Still looks super duper flat, does not look very good at all. I'm going to go with more of a reddish pink like that. And I'm just going to hide my properties panel. And I want to duplicate the model, the masked model layer. So I'm going to just hold down my alter option key and click and drag a copy of that layer up on top of all this stuff. And I'm going to name this layer Brighton... Uh, if I can spell Brighton correctly, there we go, Brighton slash contrast, something like that. And I'm going to set this layer 
to the blend mode of linear dodge add, but I think actually before I do that, I wanna desaturate the layer. So I'm gonna go image adjustments, just do a quick desaturate. It's not the greatest desaturation, but it is desaturation nonetheless. You can see it's just over the shirt, right? Because we're still masked to just the shirt. And I'm gonna set it to linear dodge add. It's gonna really brighten things up like crazy. And I'm gonna reduce the fill opacity. Fill opacity and linear dodge add are very interesting the way they work together. I'm gonna reduce it to about 40% or so. And you're gonna see here that what this is doing is it's taking that admittedly very flat color and just infusing the highlights and whatnot back into the shirt so as to give it more depth so the shirt is not just losing all of its shape and depth so that's the importance of that linear dodge add layer here in this instance so since we now have that linear dodge layer in place kind of cleaning things up it's time to add some artwork so we can we can go file place place embedded or place length embedded probably better in this case but I think I'm going to stick with what works I'm going to go back to my finder and I'm going to drag the logo 2 over into here let's do our alternate style t-shirt here and again open a smart object hit okay it's going to drop that in great I am going to scale this down and I think I'm going to scale it down a little bit more that my shift key let me make it a little bigger. I'm going to rotate it a little bit because the shirt's kind of flowing that way. Kind of get it right there in place. And now what we probably need to do is really mask this because our hair would ob obviously fall on top of the graphics. So we want to duplicate our mask up from this lower layer. So I'm going to hold down my Alter Option key, click the mask below, and just drag it right up and drop it on this layer. Now, these graphics need a little extra TLC, like the T really shouldn't be that see-through. Uh, the M over here needs a little help, right? Got running over that shadow underneath the hair here. Uh, same thing over here. So let's grab a brush tool and we're gonna be a little forceful with this. Let's right click and just size down quite a bit. I want my hardness at zero, I want it to be very, very soft. And I'm going to set my foreground color to black and I'm just gonna begin painting some of this away. In fact, you can see how imperfect my hair selection is um, because I made the selection very quickly and kind of also probably because I was using select a mask. Um, but I'm going to just try to ignore that for the sake of this tutorial. Obviously, if this is a client project, you want to be very particular and very careful uh, with the work you're doing. I'm going to hide the T and I'm going to make the Y kind of hide a little bit, even though really it shouldn't hide much at all. Uh, and then over here, what I need to do is just come in and hide the back side of the letter M a little bit. Kind of right, eh, not quite like that. Maybe we'll just knock the opacity of the brush down to like 50% or so and just blaze right through there and just give that a little bit of additional shadow as it, as it theoretically wraps around there. Make my brush a little bit larger. Let's paint away some of that top M. And you can just kind of play with it until everything looks about right, right? Like this hair that looks like it's almost running through the M. You probably don't want that to look that way. So just roughly clean it up, and when you zoom back out, it's going to really just look like the hair is flowing naturally over everything. All right, so once we kind of have the, the graphic in place, spend as much time as you want, especially I, I intentionally picked this photo just because it's very difficult because of the hair hanging over the shirt. In an ideal world, you want to show off the whole graphic and the whole shirt and everything. So if you can skip this step, hey, more power to you, but I want to at least uh, show you how to do it if you have kind of like the not the, the, not the best possible scenario, but rather a somewhat worse scenario. Uh, so we've got the mask on that logo layer. And at this point, what I want to do is duplicate up this bottom layer here, the, the bottom mask layer. So I'm going to hold down Alter Option and drag that all the way up to the top, set it to a blend mode of multiply, and then simply reduce the overall opacity, maybe to like 50 or 60 or 70, something like that. It's just going to help give it a little bit more texture. And in fact, if I really wanted to bring out the shadows, I could boost the shadows in this layer uh, using like a levels adjustment. And with the levels adjustment, hold down Command, Option G, or Control, Alt, G on the windows. So we're just affecting this, this single multiplied layer, boost those dark shadows. And you can see how it's boosting the shadows in the shirt. Again, we're just trying to accentuate some of that detail in the shirt. Uh, and there we go. We've boosted those shadows in the shirt. And if this needs to be uh, reduced or increased opacity-wise, we can always do that. And the levels will rise and fall with this layer because it's clipped to that layer. Now, of course, what are we forgetting? Well, we're forgetting the displacement uh, filter that needs to be applied to our logo to make it kind of di be displaced and move and flow with the shirt itself. How do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Select that layer. It's a smart object. And we're going to go filter, distort, displace. 
Now, because of the sort of micro texture on this shirt, I don't want to displace this to a horizontal and vertical scale of 10. What that's going to do is it's going to make all the edges of my graphic very like scratched and scraped and not very uniform or nice at all. I still want there to be a little texture on the edge though. So I'm going to set the horizontal and vertical scale to something like three. Let's try three. Stretch to fit is perfect and repeat edge pixels is exactly what we want. Hit OK and it's going to say, hey, what would you like to use as displacement map? Well, remember we created one, displacementmap.psd. Hit open. It's going to open this bad boy up. And there we go. We have that displacement map in place. There's without the displacement map. There it is with the displacement map. So you can see if we zoom in, you can see what it's doing to the edges of the graphic. And that's even just at three. But I kind of like that because it's sort of like the silkscreen ink press stuff is like sort of sinking into the texturized shirt. And I think it adds a little element of realism, if you will. Um, now, one last thing that we can do. Well, there's a couple things you can do. You could select this layer and set it to a blend mode of like multiply or screen, depending on the brightness or darkness of the graphic. That's going to help it blend in a little bit more but remember we can also add a hue saturation adjustment layer above our uh, graphic our logo whatever we're applying to the shirt clip it to the layer beneath command option or control alt g and then do something like colorize and if it's a white logo we need to begin by darkening it pump that uh, saturation up and then begin changing the color so we can do like a nice yellow here if we like over top of the pink and just commit the change now i have this set to a blend mode of screen we could go back to normal see what that looks like it's a little intense uh, that may be that we just need to reduce the opacity of the hue saturation layer right help blend it in a little bit more the point is you got a ton of options we could change the color altogether if we want it um, i'm going to stick with the yellow i think i like when the uh, lower logo layer is set to the blend mode of screen in this case it looks good if you're working with darker colors, darker shirts, you might want to go multiply instead of screen. So just play around with multiply and screen or a normal blend mode and your hue saturation layer. But you can see relatively quickly we went through and not only did we do it, but I sat here and explained it to you, which always takes longer than actually just straight up doing it and being focused on your work. We went ahead and we mocked up some t-shirts on a model, off a model, added graphics from Adobe Illustrator to those t-shirts and made it look very nice and very realistic. And I think you're absolutely going to love it. And if you did love this tutorial, make sure you slap a like on this video, drop a comment down below if you feel so inclined. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel as well. Hit that red button. You'll never miss another video in the future. I love that. And I think you're going to love it too for creating a t-shirt mock-up and designing photorealistic graphics and making it all blend together in just this mm, great package. Ah, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.